Hey, Last Outrider here, bringing you the continuing story of space elves. Ah, uh, I mean, the original Eldar. <laughs> Let's get back to it. The Eldar are clever traders and are unusual in that their craft world societies need very little from the rest of the universe. Many trade not out of necessity, but simply as entertainment, or as a means to travel amongst alien societies. This is a common thread that I've noticed here in the first edition 40k. All advanced societies have um, transcended business and commerce and money and trade and everything like that. The slan, uh, now the Eldar, the Jokero, hell, even the Orcs to a certain extent. Uh, none of them trade anymore. There's, they, they're mostly do it for other reasons or reasons that humans can understand, like they've said here. So here, like they said here, uh, many trade not out of necessity, but simply as entertainment <laughs> or as a means to travel amongst alien societies. For many Eldar, the peaceful, idyllic monotony of the craft worlds becomes so dull and uninspiring that they are driven to associate with other, younger, more hot-blooded races. This is actually their main reason, then, for coming into contact with humans. They're bored. Aside from the traders and the merchants, there are some Eldar who throw themselves wholeheartedly into alien society becoming one of either two things, adventurers or mercenaries. Adventurers, as individuals or small groups, are not uncommon in the Imperium. They are tolerated by most authorities, always attract a good deal of attention. There you go. So Eldar adventurers are not uncommon in the Imperium. That's, a, that's, that's I guess that's a, a double negative. So let's just say they're common in the Imperium and are tolerated by most authorities. How's that? Occasionally, they will take employment as bounty hunters, treasure seekers, or warriors. Larger groups of Eldar sometimes organize themselves into mercenary bands, which are both feared and respected. <laughs> I have a feeling that you will see now that the mercenary bands are going to become the Dark Eldar in the future. Mercenaries are unwelcome on peaceful, well-ordered planets but are often sought and employed by malcontent factions, warring imperial commanders, or even as protection against alien raiders. <laughs> the most famous, or rather infamous, mercenaries are composed of renegades from Eldar society. The psychotic, the malcontent, murderous, or evil characters are at odds with their kin and shunned by most other Eldar. They may meet. Such groups may even turn to piracy, becoming enemies of the Imperium and humanity. There you go. So Eldar were not inherently enemies of the Imperium. Eldar renegades and mercenaries were enemies of the Imperium. Other Eldar could just pass through. So how about Eldar on Eldar relationships then? On these craft worlds? Let's find out. Relations between the craft worlds are sometimes good, sometimes non-existent, and occasionally hostile. So that Eldar from one craft world will ignore or even attack Eldar from a rival craft. All this can appear very mysterious to humans. Eldar are usually secretive about their homes and history, 
and are generally unwilling to discuss details of their society with aliens. Whilst they share a common heritage and language, the social aspects of each craft weld vary a great deal. Eldar legends tell of craft worlds lost for millennia, and who can say what direction these societies may have taken. However, most Eldar societies seem to be aristocratic. Many of the Eldar adventurers encountered in human space claim titles of one sort or another, whereas malcontents often claim to have been disinherited or cheated of a rightful title. There you have it. That is the entirety of what we know about Eldar society with 1st edition 30k. There were no paths of the warriors. There was no fall, no slanesh, no aspect warriors, no uh, great migration, no, and this is an important to note, no eye of terror. Think about that. If that doesn't twist your noodle, think about this. Eldar were not a dying race. There is no mention here of that they're on the verge of extinction or in their twilight days. They're, so they were reproducing, and sometimes even with humans, as often as they like. That also means that there's a lot of half-Eldar running around. <laughs> um, craft worlds, as you can see, they could like, or most likely just ignore each other. It was up to you, or the, the game master, or whoever you like, to determine anything you want about your craft world. There were an unlimited number of them. And if you can remember from the other part, they said each craft world had an average of 10,000 warp gates on it. There was no cane, no avatars, no aspect warriors, nothing. They just traveled in the warp and didn't give a crap, which shows you that in first edition, there was no chaos as we understand it. Sorry, Chaos players, it's just it wasn't there. The Dark Eldar were obviously the nuts, uh, the criminally insane of society, basically. <clears throat> but uh, let's go on to some other things. Organization talks a little bit more about their society, where it says, few craft worlds have armies as such, and the most common organization amongst mercenary bands is based around companies of five, I mean, sorry, squads of five warriors. Ten squads make a company. That's 50. Led by a captain. The size of a squad can vary a great deal, however, including more or less squads. So there you go. Company leaders, however, are the highest recognized rank. The natural aristocratic ranking system of the Eldar provides for leaders of various levels. So what that means is the Eldar really didn't have an army. They didn't need one, and, and you didn't really have any rank above a captain, because since noble titles were so common amongst the Eldar, if you ever had any larger group of Eldar go to war their aristocratic titles would already decide the ranking structure in that group before anything happened, before the group even came together. So therefore, a captain, which apparently would be ranking of about uh, 50 Eldar to, who knows, let's say 250, uh, would be the highest rank, military rank, you would have in Eldar society. No aspect warriors. No exarchs. No, uh, what, phoenix lords. No farseers. No warlocks. No avatars. In Warhammer 40k first edition. Now, let's go on to something else I also found very interesting buried deep in the, in the rules I was reading about Eldar technology. Uh, actually, not even technology, transports. I was just reading some of the rules on how you, how you got dedicated transports for them, and this is really fascinating. Eldar 
are hoverers almost exclusively, other types being a distinct minority. Eldar vehicles are elegant and waspish, but they are no less powerful or deadly for that fact. Craft worlds have the ability to fabricate vehicles from raw materials gathered automatically by robot scavenging and recycling systems. No wraith bone. No spirit stones. No infinity circuits. It was normal technology, but this is the part that's really going to fuck with you. Using a design and construction computer, requirements are duplicated within seconds using patterns preserved in the craft world's memory. Does that sound familiar? Let's, let's look at that again. We said using a design and construction computer, uh, robots gathered material, brought it into this device, and uh, the computer then duplicated within seconds patterns of machines that it then automatically produced. A design and construction computer. I believe the design and construction computer has a new name today. Or a standard template construct. An STC. So it appears, yes, that STCs, these automated factories that just stamped out uh, um, high technology items or Archaeotech, were first used by the original Eldar. Think about that. <laughs> Tactics. Eldar are cunning tacticians and very clever at enticing foes into complex and deadly traps. When pressed, however, they are by no means afraid of plunging into hand-to-hand -hand combat, shrieking their blood-chilling battle cries, and laying into the enemy with great ferocity and courage. And that is the original Eldar for you. See you next time. Bye.